Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to talk about God's Word, followed by Pat's Two Cents. We are going to go to Second First Peter, First Peter, Chapter Four. And I hope this blesses your heart. Here we go. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming is unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto, unto you therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed or rejected, however you want to say it, the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they are appointed. But ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him which has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or even unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness but as the servants of God honor all men love the brotherhood fear God honor the king or the president that's two cents <laughs> Okay, back to the word. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience sake toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your faults? Ye shall take it patiently. But 
if when you do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable to God. For even hereunto were ye called, because, listen, Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. But if when ye do well, excuse me, I misplaced, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not. Pat's two cents. Boy, I put my foot now. Okay. He, yeah, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins on his body. On the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed for ye were sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls you know when that word says whose stripes ye were healed you know how many times they whipped him on his back? They whipped him like they used to whip the slaves, the black slaves in this country. They would whip and whip and whip till their skin was tearing apart. I mean, it was horrible. Jesus endured that. The kind of whooping that would make you lose all, all control of your body functions. The kind of whooping that would make you bite your lip off. I mean... That's a, an excruciating kind of pain that Jesus allowed on a body that had committed no sin by the very people. It's Pat's two cents now. By the very people his own hands created. How much more should we be willing? We may not want to. I know I don't. But are you willing? That's a hard pill to swallow. It's hard when you think about how we're in these last days. This is a great admonishment for the type of day we're in. We have no idea when we're going to hear martial law. We have no idea when we hear a bomb go off. We have no idea where, if and when. Or from where? We have no idea how this is going to pan out. So we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. We have to be very careful and remember that God is in control. We don't have to defend ourselves. We don't have to cuss the policeman out. We don't have to tell the soldier where to put his his weaponry. We don't have to ball people and kick people and call people out of their racial names and disrespect and dishonor and act plum d fools. No, we don't have to stoop that low. The word told us. Watch how you carry yourself. Watch your conversation. In the New Testament, conversation does not only mean what comes out of your mouth, but what your body communicates. Conversation is how you live, your lifestyle, how you carry yourself. Are you willing to lay up your desires, your wants, your wishes, your rights for the sake of God's kingdom? For the sake of seeing a soul get saved? What about one of the guards that might be arresting you because you believe in Jesus? You gonna pray for him or you gonna cuss him out? Mm -hmm. See, these are the kind of words we need to read 
when we see what the, what time it is, when we see what's coming, the writing's on the wall. It's all over the place. Everybody, even atheists, everybody can tell. We're not only in the last days, but we're in some scary times. And no matter who and no matter what, God tells us to treat with honor, treat with respect. Don't stoop to their level and act as ugly as they're acting. No. I don't care if you committed no crime. You exude God's love. You exude God's mercy, God's patience and meekness. That doesn't mean that you are worth nothing and people can walk all over you. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking attitude. A person can cuss you out. Yeah, okay. Words. Gas blowing in the wind. Now you can stoop to their level and cuss them out back. Or you can stand there with your mouth shut and exemplify the class act of God's character. You see how I'm sitting here being real quiet. I'm making a point. When you deal with a fool with your lips sealed, no fear in your eyes, but no confrontation speaking out from your body either. What are they going to do with that? You can only argue if you have an argument. An argument is a two-way dance. It takes two to tango. You cannot argue with one. A solo cannot argue. It takes a duet at least. Two, three, four people. Once you narrow it down to one and the fool is flapping his jibs in the wind, talking loud, saying nothing, and you're just standing there or sitting there with your mouth shut because you have nothing to prove and you know it. After a while, they're going to get tired of feeling like they're looking pretty stupid right now because there's nothing coming back. There's nothing to fan the flame. Yeah, it really takes a lot of growing to get to the point where you find yourself willing to allow a fool to fly solo. You hear me? I don't care if it's a cop. I don't care if it's a judge. I don't care if it's somebody that wants to do a citizen's arrest. I don't care if it's somebody at the store cussing you out because you're white, you're black, you're Puerto Rican, you're Italian, you're Jewish, whatever. I don't care why they're cussing you out. All you have to do is walk away. And while you're walking away, pray to God. God knows how to handle a fool now. He made them. He didn't make them to be fools, but he made them, and he knows just how to shut them down. You hear me? He knows how to convince them to stand down more. So I say all that to say, trust God in these evil days. Don't get caught up in the storms. Don't get caught up in the, in the vain, empty words. Leave it alone. Don't partake. Don't give any of that foolishness your time or your energy. You show the world what it really means to be a child of the Most High God. Amen.